Hello everyone. In this session, I would like to discuss about debouncing in JavaScript. So, why we go for debouncing? Debouncing in JavaScript. Why we go for debouncing means to optimize the performance. How we can optimize the performance? Where exactly the performance issue? How we can overcome that problem by using debouncing? I want to explain. For example, let me take one simple scenario. I have one function. My function f1. Inside this function, there has thousand lines of code is there. Thousand lines of code is there. Now, my requirement is based on some event, I want to call this function. I want to call this function. For example, hundred times if I trigger an event, hundred times I need to call this method. Okay, think like that. Think like that. Hundred times you are going to call this method. So, if you call, if you call the same method, which is having the same code, okay, that means first time you call it, calling F1, then the time same 100 lines of code is going to execute. Next time, same 100 lines of code is going to execute. How many times you are going to call this method? Okay, how many times? Okay, the same code is going to execute or not? Okay, 100 times, for example, it's going to call this method 100 into 1000. These many lines of code is going to execute. Okay, here there is no code change inside this function. There is no code change, nothing. The same function is going to execute or not. So here the problem is for every event, for every event, this function is going to call each and every time thousand lines of code is going to execute. It's like what? It's like the same code we are calling multiple times or not. It may impact on your performance or not. So instead of calling this particular method for each and every event instead of calling this particular method for every event can we reduce the calls can we reduce the calls instead of calling 100 times 100 times can we reduce these calls to one or two or five like that number of times calling a function can we reduce yes we can do that number of times all this function can be reduced means yes we can reduce it by using debouncing so instead of calling the same function 100 times for the same cause my requirement is like call this function okay can we reduce the number of calls to one or two or five okay now here 100 into 1000 these many lines of code is going to execute here two times if we call Two into 100, it's like 200 lines of code only will execute or not. So finally, we can conclude like my debouncing, it's like a performance optimizing technique by limiting the number of calls a function or not. By limiting the number of calls of a function. Here, 100 times, instead of that, I'm going to limit it to two times only or not. So programmatically, how my debouncing is going to work, I want to explain. So let me open Visual Studio Code. Take one simple HTML file. Debounce.html. So just I want to explain one simple scenario. That's it. Take one set. Set text. Here. I have one text box. Here I have one text box. Now think. Let me run it first. Open with the live server. Now see this. Inspect it. Think you are searching for one product, for example. You are searching for one product. Okay, this is like one e commerce search box. You can think like that. You are searching for one product. For example, LG and Vivo, Lenovo. There is no submit button, nothing. On click, that means on entering the text inside the text box, then only I want to get the products and I want to show the products to the end user here. That is my requirement. That is my requirement. Here, no submit button, nothing. On entering, just you entering some text here. Okay, that time only I want to 
send the request to the server and get the product. So that how you can write the code means if you entering a text inside the text box, if you want to listen that text box changes, there has one event is there on key up or on change any one of these particular usage function search. Now, can we call this, can we define this function to call? Okay, how we can define the function? Function search, this is my function. Okay, so my console.logup, okay, function search, use it for what? To search the product what you entered in the text box or not, so that where my products are, think normal general scenario, where my products are, my products are inside the database. Inside the database, if you have the products, you have to send one Ajax request and you have to get the data or not. For example, say this, let me open paint. This is my paint one. Okay, here, one text box is there. If you enter some data here, you will know all like this. All my products is already stored within my database. Okay, this is your client port. My client application not directly communicate with what database so that you should have to take some other person help or not. Who is that guy? My server side technology or not. So here my server side technology come into the picture. Now you have to connect with your server side technology. My server side technology is going to communicate with my database and give the response. That means give the products list back to you or not. So that this is my server. Okay, now my client is going to communicate with the server. We can say like a request, and my server is going to give the response back to this guy. We can say like a response. So that here from my client, whatever you enter the data, that data you have to give it to my server. My server, based on the data, he is going to search that matching products or not based on the input he is going to search that matching products and give that products back to my client or not so you have to understand here the scenario is for every change you have to send a request to the server and get the response or not sending the request and getting the response it's state like it's not an easy thing why because my text box inside my browser my database is somewhere it's running out of your mission my server side code is running out of my machine in some server, for example, thing like that. Then that time, sending the request and getting the response, it takes so much time or not. It's a costly thing or not. So that here, you enter some data, then that time you need to send one Ajax request or not. Ajax request. Okay, now come here. Can I refresh my face? If you go to my console, if I go to my console, say this here, you know, if I text like this, if I text like this, say this, if I type this text like this, how many requests go to the server, say this, multiple requests go to the server or not, multiple requests, say this, you know, see this, for every character, one request go to the server or not, one request is nothing but it is not an easy thing, you have to communicate with my server, my server is going to communicate with my database, my database give the data to my server set technology and my server set technology give the data back to my client or not. This much background process is going on. Background processing is going on. That means for the CMC, for my L, do you want me to send a request for my L text? Is it the valid? Is it the valid product name? No, then the time why I need to call for a, for a single character L. L E, it's also not a product name. So for each and every key of you are sending the request here. So this method is called, okay, this method for every key of this method is going to call. So what we can do, what is my debouncing? What's my debouncing? It's like a performance optimizing technique. Okay, how we can optimize the performance means by limiting the number of calls a function or not. Here, you are calling functions it's how many times for each and every character whatever the character you are entering okay for every character you are going to send the request to the server or not you are going to send the request to the server or not so can we limiting the number of calls can we limit this number of calls by using debouncing yes we can do it so how we can limit the number of calls of this particular function which means okay just create one more function one more function for example debounce is my function 
the above which is my function extra function i return that's it now this is my server call function sending the request and getting the response don't call this one directly from here instead of calling function sets just call the bones you can put any name based on your requirement just our concept is debouncing so that i feel like that so here simple just create one timer okay just create one timer okay, how my timer is going to work it's take like one callback function as an argument and then here you are going to place some time interval that's it this is my timer or not okay internally how my debouncing is going to work since now first time first time you enter some text you enter some text that means one key of event record after that within fraction of milliseconds you enter one more text for example think like that you enter one more text okay the gap between one event to another event for example okay one second the gap between one event to another event is like how much one second one second think like that okay after that after that okay one more second you send one more request that means not one more request you triggered one more event which event okay which event on key of event okay and then and then you given some lag lag the lag between here to here is like simply 5 seconds for example 5 seconds or 5 seconds okay after that within 1 second or next after that within 3 seconds 3 seconds okay i will explain don't worry about this one 1 second okay this is like 3 seconds now i taken the gap again i taken the gap again is like 7 seconds 7 seconds now see this first i triggered i enter some character in the text box that means one event triggered okay the next event one the this event to this event the time interval is how much one second this event to this event my time interval is what one second this event to this event five seconds see for every event for every event is nothing but one <clears throat> for every text change for every text change okay my on key up or my on key up this event is going to trigger he is going to call this method or not every time but but okay by using debouncing how i can restrict this method how i can limiting this method call means one event to another event the gap is you decide okay more than 5 seconds if you give some gap one event to another event the gap is like okay minimum 5 seconds or more than 5 seconds then only you can send the request for example one event to another event the gap is like 1 second don't send the request see this here you enter some character one event to that in the past one request went to the server but this event to this event how much gap is there 1 second then that time don't send the request this event to this event how much gap is there one second don't send the request but this event to this event how much gap is there five seconds then that time you can send the request you can decide the time interval just for our, for our purpose just let's take like one second five seconds like that okay you can decide one event to another event the gap is like more than minimum five seconds is there minimum five seconds then only send the request otherwise don't send it okay here also no request okay here no request here no request here also no request okay here we have to send the request to the server here no request here also no request here we have to send the request to the server or not okay if the concept is not there how many request for every text change 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 request has to go generally but if you limiting okay if if you if you write the code like the gap between one event to another event minimum 5 seconds is that then only okay, then only i want to send the request like this if you write the code then the time how much request go to the server only two requests only or not only two requests only go to the server or not 
okay so that so that can we write the code like this the gap between one event to another event minimum 5 seconds is there then only i want to send the request to the server otherwise don't send it like that you can write the code now come here now come here okay how we can write means by using set okay here you can mention the gap okay gap how much okay five seconds i said okay just you can reduce this one to 10 milliseconds 100 milliseconds that is your wish that is your wish okay one even to another even gap is how much i i mentioned here five seconds if minimum five seconds is that then only you can send the request to the server so here you can call this method okay after five seconds you can call this method this one. okay now here if the gap is like if the gap is like minimum okay less than five seconds less than five seconds then that time this method should not call that means you have to clear this timer or not so can we create one timer variable here Clear my timer okay this is my timer. okay just here you can write like clear timeout what like like this you can write it. see first you triggered an event within one mill one second only you triggered again then that what happened first you triggered an event clear timer is nothing but first time my timer is like undefined nothing is there to clear within okay first time on timer object created or not of timer created after that within one second only again one more event is triggered this is the event one more event is triggered then that time this method is going to execute so this particular timer okay is nothing but this one is going to clear it or not when this timer is going to execute this callback after five seconds but you triggered one more event within one second right so that you clear this timeout again new timer is going to create whenever if the gap is like one event to another event five seconds then only then only this timer is not clear okay the previous timer whatever the timer created that one is going to call this particular function or not call this particular function or not okay before five seconds before five seconds this method is not called before five seconds you trigger an event that particular timer is going to clear or not now can you come here now see this okay here okay i'm going to do this gap yeah now i enter some text say this after five seconds how many requests go to the server only one request go to the server or not in the past these many requests went to the server these many requests these many requests went to the server now how many requests go to the server now it's like okay only one or two requests only or not that means you limiting the number of calls of your function or not okay again i'm telling five seconds just i taken i taken okay you can keep this interval based on your requirement okay you are limiting this function call or not generally it should have to call 40 times just by limiting to two times only or not. this is the way my debouncing is going to work in javascript thanks guys thanks for watching